Our series, What's Working, looks at innovations that are paying off in America, from education to infrastructure. About one quarter of today's college students admit they suffer consequences from drinking too much. Nearly 700,000 people say they've been assaulted by another student who had too much alcohol. A major university is turning to neuroscience to encourage kids to tap into their books instead of kegs. Jim Maxerod visited that campus to see this program in action. Jim, good morning. I think this is one of my favorite stories. I'm excited to hear it. It's interesting. Good morning to everybody. We went to the University of Vermont, long known as a big time party school, to see its new approach that combines cutting edge neuroscience with age old incentives to build students' brains both inside and outside the classroom. And in the process, turn the old college keg stand on its head. You know it's not your average college dorm when violins can be found on every floor. It's music to my ears. But alcohol and pot are nowhere to be seen. This brain is sitting there going, feed me. Psychiatry professor Jim Hoodjack pulled a few strings, filling this freshman dorm with 80 violins while requiring students to sign this contract, no drinking or drugs if they want to live here. A bold experiment on any college campus, but he did it here. We didn't go do it in a place where everyone would say, oh, well, that would work. We did it in a place where people giggled. At the University of Vermont, senior Cal Rollins. This reputation it had as a party school. Yeah, I was, was, I was that aware. Deserved? I would say, yeah. Toga, toga, toga. But for students not interested in Animal House. Ah, thanks. I needed that. Welcome to the wellness environment. They call us a cult. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they call me a narc. They say, like, wellness environment's no fun. It's so strict. At this program for incoming freshmen, it's goodbye toga, hello yoga. Late night pizza and round the clock partying have been replaced by Peloton bikes and personal trainers. The idea? Surround students with activities that expand the brain not zap it with the usual menu of college indulgences. I remember even learning that you, you're supposed to eat probiotic yogurt to help your brain function. Probiotic yogurt? Yeah. <laughs> Helps your brain function? Dr. Hood's, yeah, well, yeah, he'll reinforce that again and again. And again. And, and again. again, yeah. And it's working. Binge drinking is down. GPAs and graduation rates are up. The program has grown tenfold in just four years to almost a third of this year's entering class. You couldn't come up with a worse age to send someone to college than when they're 18. It's the most vulnerable brain period other than zero to three. The brain is not done developing at 18. Not even close. So what we're gonna do... So Dr. Hoodjack, the chief of child psychiatry at UVM's medical school, set some rules. No bongs or beer pong, no shot glasses or lighters what he calls neuro triggers that tempt bad behavior. The kids in my community aren't punished if they go out and have a beer or smoke the dilly weed. It's just not allowed in their dorm rooms. Yeah! Hoodjack frames it as an exercise in making choices, handing out Apple watches for students to record the consequences. They could say, wow, I've had three bad days. And then they can look at their own health survey and go, well, I smoked six bowls, had five shots, and didn't sleep very much. Maybe that's why. For all of us, there's Absolutely. an application. Absolutely. You build a healthy brain, a healthy body will follow. Just begin to feel your body standing. Meditation and exercise have become the activities of choice. Just warm it up. And this doctor's prescriptions are for belly breathing and reading Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is not the ramblings of a crunchy Vermonter. This is hardcore neuroscience. And now, the core of a new approach that's working. I learned all of those healthy habits that I know I need to succeed from this wellness environment. Including the knowledge that college is a time too precious to be wasted. I'm going to continue up. Now, the approach they're taking at UVM is really catching on. Some big schools like NYU here in New York have started similar programs, and more than 40 others have expressed interest in bringing this approach back to their campuses. I mean, I'm sure I'm like many of, of you. I was 18 when I went off to college, but I was about 12, if you 
measured by According maturity. to our brain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so you see something like this, you're like, oh, where was it when I oh, was Oh, but I love this story. Nora and I at the same time said, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dr. Jim Hudziak, right? Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, brilliant. Wonderful. And what yes. a way to talk about neuroscience, exactly. building good habits, but the connection between health, wellness, yep. intelligence. Yeah. And also stress. The director of the CDC, Dr. Redfield, said that to, for the opioid crisis, what you need to do is teach people to short circuit their stress with healthy things so that they don't turn to unhealthy things. But for college students, his genius, he's not wagging a finger. Yeah, he's I like saying, him. let's try this, let's try yoga, let's try keeping track yeah. of stuff. But it's the result, so much different. The results seem to speak for themselves, though, Jim. It's yeah. working. Absolutely. Well, UVM's website may be crashing. Yes. A lot of parents are yeah. right. exactly. having their kids' yeah. application exactly. forms. Yeah, exactly. you are going to UVM. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's what we're watching at the dinner table Just tonight, kids. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.